work. You see me every work, work. Hi, welcome to MU Talks on the street in Lee's office. So today we're bringing you some career advice uh, from the career professions office. So since I can't really explain this to you, she's gonna explain it, okay? So we're here today with Lee. Please. Hi, so my name is Lee Dusinger. I serve as our Director of Career Success and Professional Development. And I've been here about two and a half years. I previously worked in career and professional development at another institution for about 11 years. And before that, worked in human resources. So I love working with students. I love helping them prepare for interviews. It's, it's one of my thing. most favorite things to do. Yeah. Cool. So today, Lee's going to help us a little bit. Well, most of it. I mean, <laughs> she came to my class, and I feel like I have to take her to my interview so I can get the job. She <laughs> is know-it-all with these interview things, guys. So today, she's going to give us a few, a little, a few tidbits on how to, you know, get a job, like how to get ready for your interview, how to dress for your interview, and you know, body language to counts, and uh, a couple of you know tidbits on. The toughest questions that they always ask you and that kind of thing. She's gonna yes. give you a few a few tips on that. So, Lee, take it away. Sure. Yeah. So the first thing that I would say is that when you're interviewing, before you even get to the interview, mm -hmm. the most important thing you can do is worry about the things that you can control. There are so many things out there when you're interviewing that you can't control. They're beyond your control. It might be that the CEO's daughter's best friend is gonna get the job no matter how well you yep. do. So you can't worry about those things. You can't worry about how many other people have applied to the job. You have to worry about you. And so worry about the things that you can control. And those things really are preparation. And so the preparation is really about a couple of things. One, researching the company. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I like to call it the three C's. So kind of know their clients, know their competition, uh, know their categories, all their clients and customers all those C's that are so important. Mm -hmm. So don't just research the history and mission of the company, but really understand what they do, what space they're in, um, and be sure to also research the interviewers. You can find that kind of information on LinkedIn. If you don't know how to do that, our whole office, all the life coaches and other folks in student success are here to help you with that research piece. Um, and then the other most important part is know where you're going, um, prepare plenty of time to get there, drive there the day before if you have to, <laughs> find out what the parking situation yeah. is, if you're not there 15 minutes early or 15 minutes late, in my opinion. Oh. Don't get there too early, you know. Um, yeah. But make sure you arrive about 15 minutes early and you just don't want to have a, you know, any issues with that. Go to bed early the night before. Mm -hmm. Don't stay up. That's a no-no for interviews. The most important thing, though, is knowing yourself. And we talked a lot about that yeah. in the class. And one of my classes, one of my professors told us that when like go early to this place of interview and just you know, sit in your car and just talk, 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 talk. And I don't, I, she thinks, or she said, by talking a lot, you get, you know, more confident. And she also told us about this thing called power posing. Power posing. <laughs> yeah, she told us about the Superman thing. So the, these, all these little things, and I know dressing is part right. of what, you know, makes you feel confident, right? Absolutely. For an interview. So Absolutely. like, so for boys and girls, like what are the best tips for a boy going for an interview and a girl going for an interview. Right, right. In terms of what to wear. What to wear. Absolutely. To so here's my number one rule. Mm -hmm. Doubt means don't. So if you look in the mirror and you think, I'm not sure this is right, it Take probably it isn't. Right, exactly. Okay. And so conservative is always probably the best route. Mm -hmm. You're not going to offend somebody if you go just a little more tailored, a little bit more toned down. Um, I, I actually kind of dress like this today to kind of show what, what could be appropriate for an interview. Honestly, if I was interviewing at a really conservative company, I might go with a different necklace. necklace. It's a little busy, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. so I'd probably go with... It's pretty dope. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but I probably would take this off, um, and like today at work, it's fine. <laughs> but if I were actually interviewing today here at Maryville, I would wear probably a pearl necklace or just a simple gold, you know, or nothing. And, okay. and again, like simple hoops, nothing really distracting. Hair pulled back. Uh, I think for women, you can feel free to wear a pantsuit or a skirt suit. Make sure the skirt is not short. short. And so today we dress very casually. Um, we go to lots of places now very casually that mm -hmm. we didn't used to in the past. And so we're more forgiving about that. But I think when you interview, it's best to be, yeah, dark colors are good. You want to wear shoes. So, you know, kind of case in point here. You want to wear a shoe that's kind of conservative, 
dark in color that matches what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Closed toed is best. Closed toed. You know, this is a good heel. It's not too tall, not too short. Okay. Um, but if you're a woman who doesn't wear heels, mm -hmm. it would be perfectly fine to wear flats. flats. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to wear heels. And it's better, in my opinion, to wear a pair of shoes that are comfortable um, and maybe are flats so that you don't trip, you're not toddling, you know, kind of yeah. walking along uncomfortably. You're used to exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, uh, like, I don't wear a lot of closed toe shoes, mm -hmm. so I right. have these <laughs> nice flats that I always yep. wear for all my interviews. Right, so. right. And that's completely appropriate. No one's going to ding you for that. The so, other thing, oh, and the other thing I was just going <laughs> to add, um, so not only what you're wearing, mm -hmm. but also two things for women mm -hmm. and men, perfume and cologne. Honestly, uh, and, and, and smoking, let's just talk about okay. it. So first, I just wouldn't wear any. Mm -hmm. I mean, deodorant's one thing, mm -hmm. right? We wanna, be, we wanna yeah. be clean and fresh. But for perfume um, and cologne, I would just avoid it on days you're interviewing. You never know how sensitive a person might be yeah. to that particular scent. And many times, you know, you're in a closed office, yeah, yeah and you're already of... warm, and then the cologne and the perfume starts going. Okay. And so think about that for sure, I would just avoid it. Um, and then if you, if you do smoke, I think, Hopefully, most of us don't um, for health reasons. But if you do, I would just not yeah, even touch them that day, day. Mm -hmm. um, and and really get your clothes dry cleaned. Because mm -hmm. if you're a person, car. yes, if you're a person who sm who doesn't smoke, you're gonna smell that right away. Yeah. And and in some corporate cultures and other organizations and companies, that could be a negative. That's mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So for the guys, sure. any tips? Yeah. Tips for them. <laughs> so. Um, Again, dark colors, mm -hmm. you want to wear a suit and a tie. I think white shirts or blue shirts are always perfectly acceptable. Um, ties that aren't too busy, you don't want okay. to wear a funny tie. You don't want to wear a tie that has a really big pattern on it. So um, a conservative stripe, maybe a conservative polka dot, very, very small. Mm -hmm. You know, you could wear a gray suit, a navy suit, black suit, all of those would be perfectly fine. And, and a brown suit too, nothing wrong with okay. that. I think for the shoes, you wanna wear a nice tailored shoe, a okay. dark shoe that matches. So similar to women, um, you know, kind of a wing tip or an Oxford, any of those would be good options. So one thing also for men that uh, Sam, who's our career peer, I don't know if you know him, Sam Khalil, <laughs> yeah. who's wonderful, here's his number one tip and his pet peeve when it comes to men, and I think he's so absolutely right about this. Don't wear white socks. Don't wear white socks. Why? And he said, a lot of men I see dress up, they look really sharp, and then they yeah, sit down, you see and you shirt. see this white athletic sock. Okay. So you want to wear dark socks. Okay. And if it has a little pattern on it, you know, that's okay, yeah. too. You're seeing more and more men's dress socks that have a little pattern. But again, a black sock, a navy sock would be totally appropriate, but no athletic socks. Okay. So if you are going to have an interview in an organization, and you know this organization is very big on their on their color scheme and everything, like Maryville. Right, great like, question. You know, they make you guys wear red on every Friday, right, right? Right, right, So if you know this organization has, you know, some connection with their colors, I know you said we should wear conservative and dark colors. In that situation, would you advise right, right. that a student, um, a student wear maybe one of the colors, like maybe red necklace or... Yeah, I think that's a great point and I'm glad you brought it up because I think that is an exception. Okay. And, and like with all things in life, men, much of the advice I'm giving, uh, much of the tips I'm hoping to provide today are, are kind of the tried and true. Okay. And, there, and this is not a black and white situation, mm -hmm. right? There are going to be lots of shades of gray and variations and lots of exceptions. And this is one. In fact, we were interviewing somebody for a position on our team okay. recently in student success and this individual came to her interview and she had on nice black tailored pants or navy, I don't remember. She had a really nice crisp uh, white blouse with a collar. And that's the other thing, I would probably maybe wear a collared shirt mm -hmm. instead of a shirt like I have on. And then she had a red blazer on. Oh. And it, was, it looked great because so it was cute. tailored and it fit her nicely and it wasn't too loud. And red can be a power color, mm -hmm. so that's something to think about. But in this case, it was perfect, and so similarly, if, if she had been a male, mm -hmm. uh, a red tie or a stripe, okay. that would have been perfectly acceptable. And several people noticed, yeah. and, and, and in a very fun, teasing way, kind of said, I mean, are you wearing Maryville red on purpose? And yeah. she was like, well, I, I, I did dress deliberately today. Okay. And people took notice of that, so I think that's a great point that you brought up. And you up. think other companies do notice things like that too? I think like, in the right cultures, okay. sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, let's talk interview. You are in there, yes. and now you, you met the person, yes. and the questions are flowing. Game on, right? Game You're on. You're there. So let's it's talk the body moment. language, and 
the you know the harder hardest interview questions for students yes. you know yes so let's hit those points okay mm -hmm. so body language is everything when you're interviewing mm -hmm. my my um i think my top two tips would be how you're sitting in the chair okay. so and i talked about this in your class yep. so i always joke i'm very short kind of here to here right mm -hmm. and so when i sit down i feel very short especially in a low seat so no matter what I all and I was I think doing it just now yeah. I always kind of sit forward in the chair okay and um, so kind of shoulders back and kind of I always joke a little bit maybe ballerina style okay. if you're a female to think of it that way so you want to have your shoulders back but relaxed you know and I think the more you can sit forward the more that you're going to seem engaged and, and more, excited and more approachable and more approachable absolutely mm -hmm. Elizabeth that's a great point um, but I think if you were to kind of sit like this. You know, it, it can I'm feel a little casual, right, right, a little bit like I have this in the bag, yeah. uh, and while you want to seem comfortable and relaxed, I feel I, I feel a little bit pulled away from you right okay. now, rather than if I'm this, this way and I'm engaging with you, you're really with me in the moment, mm -hmm. and so I think that could be compelling. Now, okay. you want to be appropriate, you know, you, yeah. you, don't, you don't want to be like, hi Elizabeth, <laughs> we're interviewing today, um, but I think, you know, just be con conscious of that. For women, it, it's a completely appropriate to cross our legs. If you're a woman who doesn't like to do that, doesn't do that, it puts pressure on your legs, it's not comfortable, it'd be perfectly fine to do this, okay. especially if you're wearing a skirt. Okay. So be very conscious of that, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be thinking about that. And so sitting like this and maybe crossing your ankles or the other way around, okay. you can kind of do this. Um, and even if you're not sure what to do with your hands, you can always just clasp them, okay? And so that happens to I, a lot. I never know what to do with my hands. Yeah, they're kind of flying. Yeah. And, and you know, because I, I joked about this, I'm Italian, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to make a, a general statement, but I do joke. I talk with my hands a lot, yeah. and uh, as do other people. But I try not to do that too much. And mm -hmm. if I notice I'm doing it too much, I, I'll try to kind of put my hands yeah. down here. And the other thing, uh, one one thing that I will say for men and women that we talked about as well is, with your hands, mm -hmm. make sure you're not doing that fidgety habit that you do all the time in class or when you're driving, whatever that is. And so what I notice a lot of candidates doing is that the women will start to play with their hair and kind of twirl it or not even realize or kind of start to do this and play with the, the ends of it. Very, very distracting, very unprofessional. Okay. And so when your hair is pulled back, it helps It helps you to not do that. Okay. Uh, similarly, similarly for men, if you happen to have any facial hair, this kind of thinking and rubbing and kind of playing with the beard or the mustache or whatever it is can be very distracting and, and make people actually feel a little uncomfortable and a little like, why are you picking your, you know, playing with your beard? Okay. So that's just something else to think about in terms of body language. And then this, right? This is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. You want to keep eye that contact. eye contact. And, and you want to smile when you're talking. Mm -hmm. Comfortably, you don't want to do it too much because it could be a little off-putting. But you want to smile and be engaged and animated. And I think for some, for some individuals, that animation piece can be more difficult. Some of us are just more animated than others. Yeah. True. Yeah, and, and I think if that's harder for you, then you can show your engagement through some other subtle body language okay. um, things, such as sitting forward, like we talked about. Questions, right? So here's here's the fun part. Ew. So what's the question you dread most? Oh. I'm gonna flip the table and ask, <laughs> ask you that. No, one that I used that actually helped me uh, was tell me about yourself. Right. Uh, well, I said my name, where I came from, which is a, a big part of me. Absolutely. Being Ghanaian is just, main talked about my major talked about what uh, I love to do mm -hmm. my hobbies and all that stuff and then I hit them with I have 15 siblings and that just blew his mind it was yeah. like from one parent I was like oh no we all and then I explained the whole thing and he was like that is still so cool and I I just I, I feel like I should have said that it was a, for me it's a very personal thing to mm -hmm. say right so but I feel like it helped me get the job. Right. I, f I feel like they were just so fascinated. Like, how does someone have 15 siblings? How? And I, I thought, you know, it, it helped. So sure. that was me. What about other people that don't have like cool things about them to say? Right. And I don't think you have to be so jovial with these things. Mm -hmm. I think you, you want to be serious with it. You want to talk about yourself in good way in a positive way right. so what are your what's your advice on you know that question tell me about yourself yeah. it's the hardest yeah. question and the easiest right yeah and so it goes back to what i was saying at the beginning 
It's all about knowing your story. It's all about knowing yourself. And the reality is, the more you know yourself, the more comfortable you are with your story, answering that question is really easy. So I would say when you involve some personal matters in that answer, you can start to get into to some areas that you may not want to. Yeah. Because then the interviewer may ask you some personal questions, some which questions. then yeah. then sometimes those are illegal. You know? Oh. Yeah. Okay. And so it's just safer to maybe kind of, but in your case, I think it's, you just went with who you were yeah. in the moment. Um, and so, and it worked in that instance, but I think what they're really looking for in that question is, A, how do you answer an unstructured question? Mm -hmm. And then B, do you, as the candidate, understand what I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. And so the best way to answer that is to share a couple things about yourself. Maybe I'm a student at Maryville, I'm studying this, I feel that my best qualities are this and this. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the best way I can share a little bit about myself is, is through a recent story. Okay. And then maybe you share an example. So for example, Maybe you talk about what you're doing with paw print. Mm -hmm. So maybe one of the best ways I can illustrate my passion for communication, for uh, reaching audiences, for interacting with people is through this project that I do with paw print. Mm -hmm. I'm acting like you right now. Mm -hmm. And one of my most favorite things to do is interview people. So recently I had the opportunity to interview and then you share a little story about that. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can illustrate your skills, your talents through actual through experience, that. right? Okay. So that's a great way to kind of showcase who you are uh, without just reiterating what your resume already says. Hopefully they've read that. Yeah. Um, and so you could maybe share an example of something on your resume, but go into a little bit more, more depth. Exactly. More details mm -hmm. for them. Wow. Yeah. So I think it's about kind of saying, I, you know, I think my key strengths are this. And then I think the most important thing with that question is at the very end to say something like, based on all this, I, I'm really excited about this opportunity and I'm so glad to be here interviewing today. And then that kind of hands it back to the interviewer. Yep. And so that way you're having a dialogue rather than you just talking. Okay. You don't want to go on too long with that question. No. About a minute and a half is, okay. a, is about a good length of time, maybe two minutes. But you don't want to go on for ten. But you don't want to say something like, well, you've seen my resume. Mm -hmm. That's awkward. You know, they want, to, they want to hear you talk. And they also want to see uh, what your communication skills are. Okay. So they're gauging a lot of things in that question. And that's what makes it so hard. So I think if you know yourself and you know your story, and most importantly, you understand what you bring to the table for that position. What are they looking for in that position? What does the interviewer care about? Then you're making it about them, not about you. And that's always the goal with interviewing. In a genuine, authentic way, of yeah. course, that goes without saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. This, is that helpful? Yeah. Okay. So this is always helpful. I mean, I'm looking for jobs now, so this is helpful to me. Yeah. And I bet everyone that's going to watch this episode is going to find helpful tips in it and thank you so much Lee oh, I'm so for giving us this opportunity to talk to you about you know how to get jobs and, yeah. and we'll, we'll make sure we you know say thank you once we get these jobs well, I'm delighted <laughs> to be involved up. Yeah. And, and, and I think you know this but for anyone else who, who does have the chance to view this that's just one question that they mm -hmm. may ask that's just one and yeah. you really want to rehearse and practice all of the possible questions mm -hmm. the behavioral questions that yes. we talked about the tell me about a time questions yeah. and the most importantly what questions do you have for me at the end you need to make sure you have you questions have a question. ready yeah exactly yeah. but all that stuff we can practice in our office and we have an online mock interview tool mm -hmm. called interview stream yeah um, so we're here to help you with that and help you figure out that story and, be, and get very very comfortable telling that story mm -hmm. so then when you go into the interview you, it's fun. Okay. You get to just have a conversation with somebody, and that's the best part of interviewing. Wow. Thank you very much. Lee. Thank you. You heard it here, guys. If you are going for an interview, bring your resume. They're going to help you with your resume. Absolutely. Come use the interview stream, practice, and be ready to kill it at the interview. That's right. Thank you very much. Lee. Thanks for having me. Thank you.